Welcome back to Ask Endocrinologist channel. I'm Dr. Grace and with me is Dr. Hope. Hello, welcome. Yes, so today we'll be talking about goiter. Goiter, I know many of you must have seen or heard or seen someone who has goiter. And what exactly is this disease? It is an enlargement of your thyroid gland, which is the small butterfly shaped gland that is located in the lower part of our neck. When it is enlarged, it can be smoothly enlarged or it can be just irregularly enlarged. So when it is irregularly enlarged, it could be lumps or nodules, or we call it thyroid nodules. Some people have this enlarged go, uh, thyroid, and we call it goiter. So today we're going to learn about what could, what could cause thyroid gland to be enlarged, what are the symptoms you could have, and how can you manage or prevent it from growing bigger. So uh, we know, right, that if you have enlarged goiter, enlarged thyroid, rather, which is goiter, it can you may not have the symptoms. You may not even know that you have an enlarged goiter until you go for an exam or they do a CAT scan or an imaging test and they find out that there's something in your thyroid. And some may have symptoms like overactive thyroid when you are very sweaty, you're weak, you're tired, you're losing weight, and uh, you just have these symptoms of hyperthyroidism, which we have discussed in the last video. And some can have underactive thyroid. And uh, that is when you are very tired and slow, constipation, uh, dry skin, and you're gaining weight, you have not unable, you're not able to tolerate cold at all. And some may not even have any of these symptoms and their symptoms may just be compression or obstructive symptoms where you have difficulty breathing, difficulty swallowing around your neck area, or you having change of voice. So when you notice any of these symptoms, we, you should get it checked up. So Dr. Hope is going to help us today to talk about what are the things that could cause this thyroid gland to be enlarged and how do we manage it? So Dr. Hope, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, so Grace, thank you for really telling us what a thyroid goiter is. As you said, it is an enlarged thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the causes of a goiter? Um, iodine deficiency, is the most common cause of a thyroid goiter. Um, in places where they're not, where there's not enough iodine, uh, mm -hmm. you can get a goiter. And iodine is usually found in the seawater or in a food. A lot of salt is iodinized. So um, in places where there's a lack of that, there's a high uh, risk of a goiter. Hashimoto's disease, which is the autoimmune cause of, uh, of uh, hypothyroidism, can cause it. Graves' disease, thyroid nodules, uh, thyroid cancer is a rare cause of, uh, of a thyroid goiter, a very rare cause. Um, about 5% of people with thyroid nodules are found to have thyroid cancer. Uh, pregnancy and inflammation or thyroiditis can be another cause of a thyroid goiter. So what are the risk factors? As we said, a lack of dietary iodine is a risk factor. Being female, is another risk factor. Pregnancy and menopause, uh, age over 40, uh, family medical uh, history, and me certain medications like amiodarone and lithium, and also radiation exposure are some of the risk factors for thyroid goiter. We manage it. So first we have to identify the cause. So if it's just from, if it's from iodine deficiency, then obviously we can give iodine in the diet or add iodine to the diet. If it's from Hashimoto's or underactive thyroid or Graves' disease, overactive thyroid, we need to identify it by blood tests. So we do thyroid blood tests to check to see if the thyroid is overactive or underactive. And based on the results, we treat whatever that underlying disease is. Uh, in severe cases uh, where the thyroid, you know, cannot be, the size cannot be decreased and it's causing uh, severe difficulty swallowing or hoarseness, um, then, or even difficulty breathing, actually shortness of breath is one of the symptoms. So in cases where that occurs, uh, then we can even do surgery as an option for treatment. 
Thank you, Dr. Hope. I, I, I really love the way you, you, you explain it in very simple and detailed manner. You know, one other thing to add is that when, when you have thyroid enlargement, which is the goiter, most times it is benign and it is not something that which should make you freak out or make you uh, afraid or that something bad might be happening. Most of the time mm -hmm. we, when we do biopsy, we put in a small needle to see what's going on there and we realize that it is a benign thing. And if unless it causes you symptoms, which is, if it is small, we usually just observe and see how it grows. And if it is big and it's causing you symptoms, then we treat according to the symptom wise, because some of the, th the nodule might just be because of the hormone function problem. And some of them might just be because it is just iron deficiency, like Dr. Hope said, and we manage the iron deficiency. And if it is causing compressive symptoms that is endangering your breathing or your swallowing, then we recommend that you go for surgery. And in this case, even with the surgery, there are good surgery out there that can be done and you get your life back and you live your life beautifully. So is there a way to prevent this disease? People say, uh, it's unprevented. You can't prevent it. It just happened. Why people? Some people have some line of thought that oh, if it is iron deficiency, then you can prevent it. So, what do you think about that, Doctor Hope? Yeah, if it's iodine deficiency, yes, uh, you can prevent it. If you have, if you have enough iodine in your diet, then an iodine deficiency is the cause. Then yeah, in that case, it can be prevented, um, but you obviously need to be aware of the iodine deficiency in your area um, or in your diet. Uh, so specifically, uh, having enough iodine, not too much and not too little iodine in the diet, just having the right amount of iodine um, ca can be one of the preventable causes, one of the yeah, preventable causes. Also, radiation exposure is one of the risk factors. So decreasing your exposure to radiation can also um, be one of the ways that it could be prevented. But some of the other causes cannot be, you know, are not modifiable like age <laughs> and uh, female uh, gender uh, is higher risk. And uh, also the people who develop it because of autoimmune disorders like Hashimoto's or Graves disease, that's not preventable necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, thank you very much. So take on point for today is that enlarged thyroid gland, which is goiter, it, it's mostly benign. And we may have symptoms and you may not have symptoms. If you have symptoms or even if you don't have symptoms, all these are treatable. And you just need to let your doctor know what you have observed or if they find something so they can take care of it. And uh, don't because you want you don't want to have enlarged thyroid and then start increasing your iodine food content and be eating so much iodine. You don't want to make your thyroid overactive. As a matter of fact, we always encourage, just eat your regular meal. Don't add any supplement to your food because you don't want to have any thyroid problem. And with that, we'll stop here for today and we'll see you next week. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, we encourage you to please do so. And this is where you learn more about your health. Thank you for joining us.